Hey, hey, hey. Tie off another out of this world story from our space. All is fair in love and war. Today on our space, welcome to the roller coaster of love, lies, and yes, even doggy doo doo. Let's dive in, shall we? Up first, OP is torn between a desire for fairness and their families urged to unleash the financial kraken. Wife cheated. I don't want her in the house. Two kids, eight and twelve, two dogs. Her, 43, me, 44. She had an emotional affair two years ago. She convinced me it was nothing, it just worked talk. They were colleagues. I banned her from contacting him. She assured me it was an overreaction and no need. Q constant hiding of the phone, emotional distancing, and many other red flags. We end up going to emotional affairs wedding with his wife. They were mutual friends. I got feels, we're bad, but I refused to go to the wedding. I got manipulated and convinced to go. Really wish I hadn't. Three months after the wedding, a fair partner and wayward spouse start getting physical. Lasts for approximately 10 months. During this time, she is mean, toxic, and generally a horrible person to be around. To both me and the kids. She drinks, keeps, and is a functioning alcoholic. She has overall been a reasonably poor mother to our kids. Lots of shouting, drinking, and setting bad examples. A fair partner's wife sees messages while on holiday, and the affair stops. Ultimatum given to wayward spouse by a fair partner's wife to tell me never happens. Wayward spouse having therapy. Her and the therapist decide there is no benefit in me ever knowing about the affair. What sort of therapist suggests this? At this point, the affair has been stopped for two months or so. Her behavior towards me and the family had warmed slightly. Still extremely distant to me, though. At least, there is no unreasonable fighting. We have an argument one morning. I complain that she is so different and so distant. It's horrible to be around, and she is like a brick wall. Excuses and justifications thrown around. I quite blank ask her if she has cheated, and she didn't lie for once. I kicked her out. Now I live at the home with the kids and the dogs. She's in a hotel motel and wants to know what to do in the future. Wants to move back into the house and sleep in the spare room. I never want to see her again. I have told her once we are separated for two years, then we will be divorced, our country law. Having her in the house would be good for the kids, I guess, maybe, but very bad for me. We can't really afford her to be paying for a second accommodation. I earn a lot less than her, but I do majority of the child care and work from home growing a startup. I don't know what to do. I don't want her here, but she still pays for the mortgage and utilities. I won't move out because I didn't do anything wrong and I love this home. Plus, I have a home studio and workshop that is critical to my business at the home. The kids love the house too. She doesn't want to live with her parents. I think she's too embarrassed to do this because of what she has done. Let's get a quick community comment. Here it goes. There's nothing you can do to keep her out of the house. If you haven't already engaged a lawyer, you should do so. Look up how to gray rock and start implementing that around her. If she moves back in, define your boundaries. How is housework split? How is childcare split? One week on, one week off? What do you tell the kids? How are finances split? What do meal time look like? What do weekends look like? I'll be honest though, I don't think two years of living together while separated is doable. Wow, she's definitely not going to be winning any Mother of the Year awards anytime soon. First things first, lawyer up. It's time to get some legal advice on how to navigate this treacherous terrain. As for cohabitating with your suited BX, it's like living with a ghost who still pays the bills. She'll haunt you if you let her, and she'll make a mean cocktail too while she's at it. Update. So, my 40 female, ex-wife, 41 female, had an affair about a year which ended in August 2023. I found out about it in October 2023. I told her to leave the house that day. She hasn't been back. We are separated and divorce will happen in 18 months. Law. We have two kids, 8 and 11. I'm in the family home. She has a rental a suburb over. I have a bit of a unique situation. My family lent us money to purchase the house and then a few years later money to do a renovation. This one who was signed as being a loan, payable on demand with interest charged if decided by the family. This has the potential to ensure she walks away with nothing. I'm kind of fighting for her to be left with some money, enough for her to deposit her own small house so she can still care for her kids when she has them. 50-50. My family are furious at my ex-wife for the gaslighting, manipulation, and lying for so many years. They really hate her. I'm used to have a real fight on my hands to get them to stand down and not ruin her. I'm torn. I'm hurt by what she did, the hurt it caused my family, my kids, and the years of terrible treatment from her to me. What should I do? Let her get very little? Fight for her to get more. I don't want her to campaign the kids against me and their grandparents due to this happening. 
She has already said several crappy things to the kids about me and my family which is very unfair. I've been very careful to only be fair and honest. Update. She earns more than I do. If I wanted I could force her to pay me child support and spousal maintenance. Both her mother and father have split due to infidelity and both sides are well off. They have never helped her financially that I know of but definitely have the means to. They have always been happy for any financial assistance to come from my side of the family. She will get a reasonable inheritance in the time. She has a drinking problem. Prioritize drinking, drugs, and partying over the kids and family on multiple occasions. Her affair barter also earns good money. He was married only three months before the affair started. I don't know if they are a couple. I don't even care. But if they are, then together they can definitely afford a house based on salary. As many have said in the comments, regardless of what I do, she will badmouth me to her family, friends, and most likely our kids. I don't think she deserves nothing. It's not right for our kids. I'm not going to fight my family on this though. It's their money, loan, and decision. Now let's get a couple comments for the community. First up, your parents should not have to subsidize her by foregoing repayment of the documented loan. I recommend you don't give her a larger share of the marital assets, but at least that's your own choice. But if you're expecting gratitude or less slamming of you to the kids, you're fooling yourself. She will only up the ante on sour graping you so as not to have to regret what she's done. DOP replies, this is very much their point of view. They helped her and I financially to get into the house. Now she has abused that generosity, so why should she continue to benefit? Another person comments, Enforcing loan provisions isn't revenge. Your parents wisely provided funds in a specific way to protect their money. This was for the benefit of their heirs, your generation, and your wealth. Don't go against their generosity and fund bad behavior. Not your call in my opinion, and my guess is they're happy to take the blame for leaving wayward spouse little. The OP replies once again, On this, yes, my parents are very willing to accept any fallout for cutting her out. They have said they do not want her to ever benefit from her family again in any way. They have always said that the loan was to aid their children, grandchildren. One of their biggest gripes is the abuse of generosity and sense of entitlement. One more comment. Actions have consequences. Your family is right in doing this. I say let them burn her financially. She isn't your responsibility anymore. Yes, she is the mother of your kids and naturally you don't want to see her destitute. But she has the rental that, I assume, she can afford. So I'd leave it at that. Split the actual marriage assets, savings, shares, pensions, etc. Down the line 50-50. If she's already prioritizing partying and drinking over you and the kids, it sounds like she's already made up her mind on what she wants. Her lack of interest in the kids makes it seem like she wants very little to do with them anyways. Moreover, the comments are right. She's not your responsibility anymore. Your kids are and should always be your number one priority. She's an absolute wild card. She hasn't cared up until this point. So why are you putting so much thought into what happens to her? My fight with your family. Your ex put you and the kids to the ringer. And for what you've said already, she'd get her drinking problem to keep her company throughout all this. She'll be just fine. And you shouldn't even be worrying about her because she surely isn't worrying about you while she's dragging your name through the mud. Take all the help you can get. What would you do? Next up, a cheater who makes you feel sick to your stomach. My long-term boyfriend, three years, cheated on me and a year later, I'm planning my wedding. Apologies ahead of time, I'm on mobile. On Friday, December 30th, 2022, I, 21 female at the time, was out at a restaurant with my boyfriend, 28 male at the time. My friend from work, Jenna, 34 female, her husband, 36 male, and some of their friends. Jenna invited us to their New Year's Eve party the next night, and we gave her an excited agreement. My boyfriend worked for a trucking company and got a call during the dinner. We had been drinking, and we were tipsy, but he had to head to work and check on one of the trucks. So he dropped me off at home and went around the corner to work. I went in, stumbling. I put some dishes away, let the dogs out. When I went into the bedroom, one of the dogs had pooped on the bed. He had issues with going potty before, but nothing like this, and I was pissed. So I called my boyfriend to let him know that the dog crap on the bed, and I was cleaning it now, but I was pissed. It took a deep breath and said, Okay. And we said our goodbyes and hung up. That night I developed a terrible stomach ache. I thought it might have been the greasy bar food, but wasn't sure. I had that stomach ache for three days missing the party. On Sunday, January 1st, 2023, after spending the last couple of days sleeping curled up in bed, only getting up to use the bathroom and make more tea, I saw a text from a friend of mine from high school. She told me that my ex-boyfriend from high school, who cheated on me, got his girlfriend pregnant. I'm nosy. I know that. So I went on Facebook and tried to find him. When I couldn't, I went to my blocked users and found him there. But I also found a woman I didn't recognize. 
I said her name aloud, asking the room who she was. More to myself than anyone else. But my boyfriend perked up, said he didn't know. But watched me as I unblocked her and went back to sleep. On Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023, I went into work after the long weekend. I was feeling a bit better, but the thought of the girl blocked on my Facebook was itching at my brain. That morning, I went into Jenna's office and asked her if texting this girl would be crazy. I thought maybe I was overreacting. I messaged her. Long story short, that Friday when my boyfriend went to the office, he met up with her. What's worse, the thing she told me that absolutely rocked my world was that he got a call from his sister that night who told him that one of the dogs pooped on the bed. No, no one else knew about that. I left him. I packed up my entire life, quit my job, and go my family. I moved back home. And then, a couple of weeks later, an old friend of mine, 23 male, from my freshman year of college told me that he had been interested in me for years, but never made a move. Today, I'm homesick from work, watching my favorite TV show, and planning our wedding. We got engaged last month. I found the love in my life after I left the man that taught me the most. It gets better, even when it feels like it is falling apart. Don't ever forget how much you're worth. Edit. Yes, the doll pooped on his out of the bed, right by his pillow. Your boyfriend's trucking adventure turned out to be more than just a late night delivery, huh? And to top it off, you come home to find a not so lovely surprise waiting for you on the bed, courtesy of your furry friend. But wait, there's more. Just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier, you discover some Facebook drama and a shocking revelation about your boyfriend's secret rendezvous. Now here you are, pinging your favorite TV show and planning a wedding with the love of your life. No matter how crazy life gets, there's always a happily ever after waiting just around the corner. Cheers to finding the love you deserve. How did you find out about your partner cheating on you? Do you have a similar story? Share with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.